and 11, New Living Translation, all of us are reading together. Let's go. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. We'll title this The Secret of Impact. The Secret of Impact. And I'm just going to be sharing. And then we'll take a testimony by video. And then we'll pray. I have resolved what I call one of the great mysteries of life with God's help. And it is this. The solution to our problems is so close that we're usually blinded to it. The solution to our problems is usually so close that we're usually blinded to it. We look too far for the solution. Example, Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Exodus 4, 1 to 3. New King James Version this time. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses ran away. <laughs> the rod that he had been carrying around, that he had put by his side when he was sleeping, became a snake. So he ran away. God told him, come back, hold it by the tail. It turned back into a rod. So in Exodus 4.17, it says, God said, and you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs. Isn't it amazing? Whatever it is, God is going to use in your life to make impact on your world, impact on other people's lives is already there. It's just for God to activate it. It's already there. But God gave him an instruction before it changed. Let it go. Throw it down. That's our discussion today. Throw it down. Let it go. We established last week the fact that each of us is incredibly gifted. I was praying for breakthrough some 25 years back. You know, I, was praying. I felt like I was stranded. Every attempt I made to make progress with my life seemed not to be working. So I was praying, Lord, I'm stagnating. This is stagnation. I need to, I need, I need to move forward. I need to do that. I was praying. When God would answer me, he said, I'm, I'm taking you to the next phase through the gift I gave you to teach. Teach people how to succeed. Teach biblical principles that will help people to succeed. Do it through radio, TV, seminars, books, conferences. I said, fine. I said, okay. And I, I, I made the move. You know, made the move. I just mentioned it in church. And that was my former pastorate then in this city. I just mentioned it in church. I want to start a radio broadcast. And after the service, two young men walked up to me. I had never met them before. I said, can we see you for a minute? I said, sure, come over. I took them to my office, my small office then. I said, pastor, tell us what you have in mind. I said, well, this is it. This is it. I described it. They said, can you give us two weeks? They introduced themselves. Both of them were working at one of the leading advertising countries in the country. Two weeks later, they came back with a report. Detailed report with graphs and charts. All the radio stations people listen to in Lagos, the percentages of men and women that listen to each station, and then they made their recommendation. As this station is just started, it's making waves. It looks like it's, it's going to gain a lot of viewership. Let's rise with it. What's the name of your program? 
I'd been trying to crack that. It'd be destiny hour or something like that. As a church boy, what else? You know? <laughs> and one of them was deputy creative director for his agency. And later he came back. He said, I found the name for your program. What is it? He said, success power. So should I be honest? I did not like the fact that I was not the one that created the name. <laughs> because I'm the one God spoke to about the program. I said, okay, it looks nice, it looks nice. I'll think about it. Then I, I was now trying to beat that combination. <laughs> I, was, I could not. So everybody has his own gift. That gentleman, small in stature, his imagination is universal. Massive imagination, very powerful, gifted guy like that. He said, success power. I could not beat it. The radio station said, Ray Power. So they said it would be success power on Ray Power. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just sharing this to say, listen, I still remember clearly the first broadcast. I had, to, I had to overcome a lot of obstacles. How do I get the money? I just kept moving forward. The money showed up. Those two gentlemen, they joined the church. This was October. One of them joined the church in January. The other joined in August. I believed in tomorrow. God moved them in because of what he wanted to do. The resources are there. But until you make the move, you will never know what God has provided for you. The money side, the day they, they mentioned the amount of money we needed, you know, both for production and airtime for the first quarter, I almost screamed. But I just remembered that the meeting, I quickly reminded myself inside, you are the pastor, and you are the one that has been teaching them faith. You can't sit down here and say, I don't have money, okay? So I just said, that's fine, that's fine, we'll take care of that. I, I go back home and say, Kai! I took the amount of money because I could not even figure out how to raise the money. I wrote it on a sheet of paper and stuck it on the wall in our bedroom. I was confessing every day, calling the money in, <laughs> you know. But eventually the money came, everything, and then we went on. I still remember that day, the 8th of February 1995, when my voice broke on radio for the first time. Pastor Nikki and I were somewhere in the Kejam, you know, at the, at, at the clinic. I had to tell the doctor, sorry, I need to go out, I need to go out. Because it was going to be 11 a.m. and the broadcast was coming on for the first time. So we quickly ran to the car, put the radio on in the car. Then for the first time I had my own voice. <laughs> Welcome to Success Power. I am sad and dear. <laughs> Very unique experience. I didn't know anybody before that was running a radio broadcast. I had not listened to anything like that before. The average radio broadcast was 30 minutes. The vision God gave me was 15 minutes. Christian programs ran during the week. Holy Spirit said it was not a Christian program. That I should not quote the Bible. I should not pray in the name of Jesus. Even I had a problem with that. And I knew some people were going to roast me. How can you a pastor? Are you ashamed of God? How can you a pastor? Eh? You will not quote the scriptures. You will not mention the name of Jesus. Yes. You know, somebody asked um, Pastor Nikkei one day, I hope Pastor Sam is not going off course. I hope he's not going off tangent. It was like as if I was backsliding. And they did not understand God's strategy. Okay, I struggled with it myself. The Holy Spirit said, what's your problem with biblical references? When the Bible was written, it was not written in chapters and verses. They broke it down for ease of understanding. What's your own problem with it? He said, when my word enters people's hearts, it will do its job. Sharper than any double-edged sword. But once you bring religious language into it, it says some people will raise their defenses, they will not even hear. It made me understand I was dealing with a country that had different religions. And Christians were only just about half and all. Did you know, the wisdom was coming on how to do it. It was unique. I've not seen anybody do it before, but that is the point. That God only makes originals, he does not make duplicates. When he's giving you those crazy ideas, that's where your gift is. That's what will make you different. That's what the world needs. I didn't know. No. When he said, teach people how to succeed, I said, me? Have I succeeded? <laughs> what authority do I have to teach people how to succeed now when I'm not successful yet? He said, it's not your success that gives you the authority. It's the fact that I told you to do it. Do it. What was he teaching me? As long as you keep the focus on yourself, you won't find the power in your gift. Because the gift was not given for you. 
is given for others. I tipped my small jar of oil. The little bit of research, because I, I was also struggling as a young man trying to succeed, but I had read many books. I'd learned principles. I did not realize as whatever little I thought the knowledge was, it was going to be a blessing to millions of people. That first broadcast, somebody took off a journalist from the outskirts of Lagos, ran to our office. I remember the title, it was Power of Persistence. He had made up his mind to commit suicide. He said by listening to that 15 minute broadcast that he decided he was not going to die anymore, that I just saved his life. That's why he ran all the way down. For whatever it is, it saved one life. Hmm. This young man who was struggling, how do I break through? How do I, and God said, the secret to your breakthrough is inside you. Help other people with the gift that you have, okay? And, and uh, later we would have another testimony of a, of, of a lady. She was frustrated, she was tired. She had gotten to the end of herself. She was holding a bottle of poison, about to take it when she heard my voice on radio say, don't take your life, this is not a time to die, and stopped. She brought the bottle of poison to her office. For all that it is worth, I think the broadcast has been worth it. Amen. <laughs> the little boy that was, you see, the, all I was concerned for, how to succeed, how to break through. You will break down. <laughs> Your breakthrough is tied to other people's lives. Serve them. Use the gift God gave you to meet needs in their lives. And then some, some years back, we had the story our broadcast is on TV in Gambia, and the president then was watching national TV, watching, watch Success Power for the first time. At the end of the broadcast, he called the TV station and told them to repeat the broadcast again for the whole country to watch. That's amazing. Okay? <laughs> I'm praying for they start to grow, God bring people, he says. You want the church to grow so that you'll be more comfortable, right? That's not why I set up that church. I set it up because of the people I sent to you. Until you help them to succeed, you won't find the definition of success. For your ministry, that's when I calm down. Say, wait, what do church members need, actually? And they now deployed the gifts that God gave me. I'm called primarily to the office of a teacher. It's the teaching. It's, it's the way my mind works. It's the way it processes information and then makes it available to people in a way they can use it. I help, I help people to understand principles, what causes the effects that they want to produce. Without understanding, there can be application. But, and then, I'm just doing what's natural to me, what's normal to me, but the impact it has on people is phenomenal. And I'm meeting people all over the world, their lives are changed in massive ways just because I'm, because, because I'm teaching. But it's for me, it's a gift. Leadership is a gift. I use it to serve the church. And then the church was able to grow. Why? Because I turned the focus on people. The teaching thing, when I got crazy ideas, identified people's needs, poverty came number one. I said, wait, 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 wait. What have I been teaching on finances? I said, it was only giving. Give, give, give. I explored the giving you oh, give. What to give, what not to give, how to give, how not to give, where to give, where not to give, whom to give to. Whom not to give. So, when the Holy Spirit says, you better look at them. Until you help them to succeed, nothing will work as Wait, 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 wait. Give. They don't have. <laughs> These people that I'm looking at. <laughs> I said, Lord, it's as if they would throw themselves in the offering basket. Nothing. <laughs> I said, Lord, is there anything in the Bible I can teach them that will help them to get it? He answered me. He answered me. And that's how eventually I started an entrepreneurial class. On Sunday morning, 7 a.m., one hour. Entrepreneur, I had never heard of it before. I'd never seen it anywhere before. It's just my crazy idea. But like I said, that's the point. Because there's something unique that you have. And then we had hundreds, if not thousands of people in church start businesses of their own. It's one of those things I will forever be grateful for. Some pastors almost killed me. The, on the internet, I would read things about myself. That's Amadei. Mean, what's wrong with him? What is he doing on the pulpit? He should go to a business school to go and teach there. He is bringing marketplace principles into the church. The church is becoming worldly. The world is becoming churchy. <laughs> now you sabi. 
people need these things. I'm, I'm studying things on finances that are changing my own financial life. I will say the truth. Whatever will happen, let it happen. And that's one important thing I want to say here. T use this, your gift, serve somebody. Do something. Meet a need in somebody's life. And in the process of doing it, experiment. Experiment. A church provides an amazing opportunity for people to test their gifts, to discover and to test. You have to experiment. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the heart of any man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. In other words, we've never seen somebody like you before. So, these gifts are diverse. And that's what that verse that we started with says in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. It's a great variety. So some of us need to, you know, in our church, we have all kinds of units. We have different kinds of ministries. All kinds. People, some people visit the prison, some go to the hospital, you know, um, some go to Brotels to speak to the ladies there. Divers. Pastor Grace used to have this phenomenal result with Okada riders. We had not, never seen anything like that before. She just had special results. They were giving their lives to Christ in droves. So to the point where she would go to their parks, you know, and do fellowship with them there. So we started cell, cell groups, small groups for them. We now had hundreds of them in Desta, just because of a lady. So that's why we were very happy for her to join the pastorate. Because it's like, ah, something's working here. Oh. So that's what I'm saying. It's, human needs are diverse. That's how the gifts are also diverse. And I tell people, if you are not sure of which you need to join for a start, because you see our music unit, you know, some people have gifts to sing. Some have gifts for drama. That's why our reflections, our drama group is world class. The scripting, the straight stage props, you know, people have their specializations in those areas. People have discovered their gifts. They're serving with those gifts. So you have this unit, you know, that stands by the gate when you're coming in, smiling at you, greeting you cheerfully. You, I had never known that before to be part of church culture until some people here in this said that was what they wanted to do. I said, fine. <laughs> they smile, they greet, they shake your hand, welcome you to church. They, and I got to the value of it one day when somebody shared a testimony and said, the first time I came to this I was confused, I was depressed, I was just driving around. I didn't even, I, I was, I had issues with my former church. I was just driving, I didn't know which church to go. Holy Spirit said, go to this He said, and when I came in, as I walked through the gate, he said, some people shook my hand, they smiled at me. He said, I just felt healed. I just said to myself, they love you here, okay? <laughs> Everything else that day, Everything was good to the person. Sermon was good, announcement was good, everything. <laughs> and it all started from the gate. Don't underestimate. Some people are making millions from their looks. Some from their smile. You don't underestimate what, whatever it is. If you are beautiful, the beauty itself is a gift. What do you think? You know that beauty thing, you can't force it. So we'll take a testimony. <laughs> we'll take a video testimony from one of those people here in Desta who's deployed his gift. Let's watch. My name is Jaye Willabi. I'm a member of Desta. I joined Desta 2008. It was a miraculous way because the first day I stepped my foot on Desta, I was coming from a word and I heard a word that says, this is where you belong. It happened to be the last service on getting to this star. I entered that service and even some preach a word that mentioned, he said that if you joined this star within three months, if your life didn't transform, ask yourself. My own life transformed within three weeks. I say three weeks, three weeks. God transformed me from being the same Dugo to now Dugo Jaye. If you know the meaning of Dugo Jaye, you know the meaning of Jaye. Today, I call myself Jaye Wolabi because where I was coming from and where I, I am today. In joining this staff, these are the things this staff did for me. 
I joined this star singles through Tunde Ojukutu and Tinoke. And during the unit, I was picked to be among the executive of singles. Being that, singles started going in a way that I myself, I was like, oh, I can find my future partner. Giving my life to Christ, I said, Lord, I'm coming from the world. Today, I want to be a newborn. All things have passed away. And I said, Lord, direct my path. Let me meet my own fiancé, my own wife to be. Then, during that period, Bishop Oyojoko used to have monthly program in this time for the leaders and pastors every month, two, first Tuesday of the month. I started coming. That very Sunday, Reverend asked people that if you want to volunteer, come and they will share you. I joined the unit and I was shared to Sparkle's unit. And I was like, oh, can I do this? I can't do this. This is not me. I used to be a very shy person. I mean shy person. I can't look people's face. But I was picked then and I said, okay, let me go. Then Kunye Adedine said, bro, stand by me. Just will be waving your hand. And I was doing that and I would be closing my eyes, not knowing that is where my strength is. The third month, I met a lady that I proposed to marry to. Then it took us six months. After six months, to transform so many things in my life. Because meeting now, a lot of things changed within that period. I was able to stop smoking. I was able to stop humanizing. I was able to stop to stop eating hand, clubbing, everything stopped in my life then. After it stopped, I joined um, Sparkle Unit fully. I said, no, this is where I belong. Then during that period that the lady said, no, let us have a second thinking about this uh, relationship. I said, wow. At the end of the day, the relationship fell apart. It fell apart totally that it took me one year. One year before I could be able to meet my wife to be today. After joining the Sparkles, I joined the, um, I participated in what they call So Off. Um, so Off is a reality fashion show. Then in that show, I met a lot of designers. We are like 21. Out of dress, so I'm among the finalists. From there, I did Nigerian Fashion Week. From Nigerian Fashion they picked me and they took me to Vodacom Fashion Week in Mozambique. From there, I went to South Africa, fashion week from there to london from there to u.s god has transformed my life god doesn't take anything from me but giving my service is what is the the end is the result of what i'm having today to today i'm a benefit of service i gave to god i'm a benefit of what i'm doing at that beautiful gate i call it beautiful gate it's a gate that god is changing so many things i told my pastors anytime i'm talking i said at that gate if i don't go inside the church for what at the end of the service, I will buy the seed. Before I get home, I will listen to the seed. I will pay my tithe. But at that gate, I'm fulfilled. At that gate, I'm doing my work. I'm totally fulfilled. At the end of the day, I look back and I say, oh, it can only be God. It can only be God. Today, I give God the glory. Today, I will apply. Join the service unit today. Your life will not remain the same again. Mm -hmm. Anyone that has tried it knows there's benefit in serving. Serving God with the gift. When you have a gift, you create a platform for expressing it or you leverage an existing platform. That's why, that's why I love the church system because you can leverage it. You can make your mistakes anonymously, and the church will bear the cost. <laughs> Some of the best musicians on this planet started from church choirs. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Serve God with you. And serving God, God is not here. It's serving people that is serving God. But service is the key to greatness. Anyone that wants to be the greatest among you, Jesus said, let him be the servant. And I'll say this finally. This time, remember what Elisha said to the widow in 2 Kings 4. When he said, go and borrow empty vessels. He said, borrow not a few. This time, remember, they are big things. When you've identified the need God wants you to meet in the society, go for it big. Amen? Go for it big. When God gives you those visions, go for it big. 
If you say, I don't even know what my gift is, I recommend one unit in this start to you. Watch first, the prayer unit. Go and start there. When you pray, 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 you will catch revelation of what your gift is. <laughs> Please bow your head with me, let's pray. I want you to say a prayer of consecration. Lord, everything you invested in me, I put on the altar. All the gifts, all the skills, all the opportunities that you have given me, I lay everything down. They're not for me. I'm only a steward. Use these gifts for your glory. That's what the passage says. That eventually we're to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may glorify, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Lord, make me a blessing to someone. I'm not here to be a liability. I'm an asset. Let your power come on my gift 